you don't know JavaScript is one of the most popular book series for JavaScript. It is recommended by many professionals. The author is working on the second edition. Now, so far there are two books released and I'm going to cover these books chapter by chapter. The first book is called Get Started. And the first chapter is about some basic facts about JavaScript. Here are the nine points covered in this chapter. How much do you know about them? We are going to look at the name of the language, the organizations behind the language, environments and problems come with different environments, different paradigm in programming. Do you know JavaScript is a backwards compatible language? What does that even mean? What is transpiling? A compiled language? Web assembly versus JavaScript and the strict mode. If you don't know the answers to all these questions, this video is for you. First thing first, the naming. When JavaScript was first created, Java was the most popular language. And just like JavaScript, it shares some syntax with C, such as using a curly bracket to contain a block of code. But besides that, Java and JavaScript are two completely different languages, just like dog and hot dog. And JavaScript is obviously not a scripting language. The word script it just means that it's a lightweight language. As the author said, JavaScript is like a web Java. And Mocha was also a contestant for the name of the language. Officially, it is named as ECMAScript, if you want to be formal. ECMA is the standard organization for JavaScript and the committee that manages JavaScript is the TC39. The committee is comprised of 50 to 100 members from big tech firms like Google, Apple, Samsung, etc. They meet every other month for around three days to talk about all the proposals for new features. Proposals go through five stages from stage zero to stage four. A stage four proposal will be eligible in the next release. The whole process may take a couple months to a couple years. You can find all the proposals on their GitHub. Let's take a look at the alert statements here. If you know a bit of JavaScript, you've definitely seen this function before, but it's actually not in the JavaScript specification. It's provided by the environment, such as the JavaScript engine of the browser or Node.js. Some say Java is not consistent. It could be the result of the fact that some functions behave differently in different environments. Paradigm means different styles of coding. Common paradigms include number one, procedural programming, where you write code in a linear fashion from top to button. The C language is a typical procedural programming language. Number two, object-oriented programming, where code is organized in classes. 
we have C++ and Java in this paradigm. And last but not least, functional programming, which organizes code into functions. Haskell is a typical functional programming language. And JavaScript is a multi-paradigm language, which means you can write your code in any style you like in JavaScript. JavaScript is backwards compatible. That means updates of the language won't break the old code. It's safe to use old code or libraries in your program. And HTML and CSS are forwards compatible. That means new features will be ignored by old engines. As a result, your program with new features can still run in old engines just without the uh, you just can't see the new features. That's why the old Internet Explorer can open modern websites, but something might be missing on the site. There are millions of computers running different versions of browsers with different versions of JavaScript. Many people just don't upgrade their browser to the latest version. That means if you have some new features from the latest JavaScript in your program, these features might not work in some browsers. But we can't just wait until everyone's upgraded their browsers, because that's never going to happen. The solution to this problem is transpiling and polyfill. Transpiling means to translate new features into old code so that old engines can understand. We can achieve this by using Babel.js. With Babel.js, you can just write your code with latest features from JavaScript and don't need to worry about compatibility. As Babel will transpile your code to an older version of JavaScript that works on almost all JavaScript engines out there. Polyfill means if you want to use a new function provided by the latest JavaScript in your program and you want old browsers to run your program smoothly, you can define this function in your program manually. It becomes a function you created instead of provided by JavaScript. Babel uses this method to transpile JavaScript code as well. There are two types of programming language when you look at it from the perspective of how it is run. The interpreted language and the compiled language. Interpreted means your code is passed during execution. Compiled means your code is passed and converted into binary code before it is run. JavaScript code is passed by the JavaScript engine and then optimized by the just-in-time compiler. Finally, executed by the JavaScript virtual machine. So it's a compiled language. WebAssembly is gaining more attention recently. Basically, WebAssembly converts code from other languages so that it can be run in a JavaScript engine in order to get a better performance. So it's not the same as JavaScript and it won't replace JavaScript. If you put use strict at the beginning of your code, you are using strict mode for your code in this file. It should be your first line of code in this file. 
except for comments or empty spaces. You can use strict mode just for a function, only if the file that contains this function is not already in strict mode. Strict mode is not required, but guides you to write your code in a way that's best for the performance in, job, in the JavaScript engine. And if you use Babel.js to transpile your code, the transpiled code is already in strict mode. So are the ES modules. So basically, strict mode is already used everywhere. That's all for chapter one. I hope you have a better understanding of each of these nine points covered in this chapter. Thank you for watching.